Hi, I'm Spencer. I cook, develop recipes, and I grew this overgrown zucchini. Today, we are making one of my favorite recipes. It's salmon cooked in a fig leaf with a cherry tomato relish. Um, I work as a cook at a restaurant called Chez Panisse. It's in Berkeley. It was started by a woman named Alice Waters in the early 70s. And, and this restaurant really has impacted the way we eat in America, but also in the world. Um, it, it started the whole eating local, eating sustainably uh, kind of movement, as well as the eating the farm to table movement. And so this recipe, the salmon recipe, kind of embodies that whole idea of eating very seasonal um, and eating very fresh with simple flavors. It is just a fantastic way to prepare salmon. I cooked this salmon in this way before, long before I started working at the restaurant, and then it was really fun to see the salmon and, and cook it in that similar way. So uh, this salmon is uh, is great. It's King California King salmon. It has a really short season. It's just such a buttery fish and it's prepared in this way is just perfect. We have some salt, olive oil, and these are fig leaves. Um, it's kind of hard to find fig leaves in a store. If you live in the Bay Area, you probably have a neighbor or you might have a fig tree in your backyard. Um, I've knocked on strangers' doors and say, hey, can I buy some fig leaves off of you? And they're usually totally fine about it. Um, so try and find some fig leaves. They impart this like coconutty, herby kind of flavor into the, into the salmon. You don't eat the actual leaf, but it, I love cooking with fig leaves. It's one of my favorite things. And then for the cherry tomato relish, we're gonna use obviously cherry tomatoes. We have some shallot, garlic, and some herbs, some, some uh, parsley and some basil. So we're gonna make the cherry tomato relish first, and then we're gonna get the salmon cooking and we'll plate it all together. So this is a shallot. We're gonna peel it. Shallots are in the onion family, um, and they are really great used in, in dressings and um, sauces and stuff like that. We're gonna cut it into a fine, tiny dice, and we're going to put some vinegar and, uh, on there and let it macerate. And that kind of takes the sharp bite off the shallot and it, and it slightly pickles it. I'm only gonna use this like tiny, tiny bit right here. So you're gonna just make small little cuts like this. And you're not cutting all the way through. You're leaving the end intact so that it all stays together. And then you make some horizontal cuts. And then we're gonna slice it for a tiny little dice. We don't need too much of this. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it into um, a little ramekin. And we're gonna cover it with red with, we're gonna cover it with red wine vinegar. We'll let that hang out for like 10 or so minutes until the shallots get nice and pickled. And in the meantime, let's get working on our cherry tomatoes some really nice cherry tomatoes, and we're going to pick off all the little stems and cut them in half. If you like this tomato picking content, please like and subscribe these videos. And I mean, how can you not like this? Like a little star on the tomato? It's, it's seriously, it's the coolest thing. You could, if you can't find cherry tomatoes, you could use like a larger tomato and just give it a nice dice and that would work as well. Some of these are a little squishy, so they're gonna go to compost, just because they're overripe and they won't be good. And then we're just gonna cut them in half. I like to cut them from pole to pole, so from the stem end to the blossom end. And I kind of just hold it, one on, kind of hold it with my two fingers and, and hold it in place and then just run the knife through. So all the cherry tomatoes are in the bowl. And then we are going to get some garlic going. We probably only need about one clove. So we have the garlic, and then we are going to put some herbs in there. So I have some basil, and I am going to stack, pick some basil leaves, and then but stack them on top of each other. If you finely mince basil, it'll actually turn black. So 
you really want to just chop it as least as possible. So a little basil stack like this, and then I'm going to chop the basil leaves into thirds, and then turn it, and then give them a little chop. I'm going to use this knife. And that way you get a nice little, little dice of uh, basil. Cool. So that'll go in with the tomatoes. And then we'll do a little parsley. You could do a lot of other herbs. You can do chervil, you could do a little thyme. But honestly, I think I like parsley and basil, I think, for the summer. It goes really well with the tomatoes, it goes well with the salmon. Everyone's happy, you know? Um, and when you pick parsley, sorry, you really just want to pick the leaves. The little, little stem is okay, but um, just want to pick the leaves. I kind of like to group all the leaves together like this and then pick. So then we're gonna chop this up. It's probably more than I need. Really, really fine. You wanna like kind of smush it into a ball and then like finely mince. And then run your knife back and forth through it, keeping the knife like kind of tight. If you notice like I'm holding it, like I'm pinching my knife like this with the wrapping my three fingers around it. And then my left hand is kind of just holding the blade down and then you run it across. And you want it really fine. Great. A little bit of the parsley. Then we're doing a little garlic. Um, if I was doing probably more than a clove, I'd probably use a mortar and pestle. I just like smashing the garlic and pounding it. It gets releases, releases a lot of the flavors, but I'm gonna use like half a clove, so I'm gonna use a microplane. And then a little salt. And then we'll add the shallots and the acid together with the tomatoes when the salmon's cooked and uh, it will make it taste good. Maybe a little olive oil in here. Let's add some lemon zest. So I'm just gonna zest the lemon. Just gives it some brightness and acidity. Perfect. Give this nice stir. This will come together nicely. We'll mix it with the acid and the shallots right before it's cooked. So, cherry tomato relish, done. So, let's move over to the salmon. So like I said before, this is California king salmon. It has a really short season. Um, and this is also caught in a really sustainable way. I got it from Monterey Fish. It's a fish shop in Berkeley. And they're just doing something really cool. They're able to um, find these local fishermen and fishermen are doing really great things all over the world and they're finding sustainable fisheries and sustainable populations. Um, I think it's really important to eat sustainable seafood. Uh, my background's in biology. I studied a lot of fishery stuff and um, I think the one thing we can do, if, or one of the many things we can do to, to eat sustainably is to eat sustainable seafood. I think it depends on how the fish was caught, where it was caught, what does the population look like? So it's not just salmon. It's like, let's zoom in to what species of, or what species of salmon, where it was caught, how it was caught. And that's a lot of information to process. The best thing to do is to go to a resource called Seafood Watch. It's put on by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. All you do is just type in your seafood, like king salmon, and you'll see all these different um, king salmon types that are out there of like, was it caught by a troll or a person or a, you know, a drill, a gill net? And where was it caught? Was it caught in the Pacific Northwest or, or California? And depending on these different populations, depending on how it was caught, it'll, it'll tell you what is sustainable to eat this or to not eat this. So all that to say, use Seafood Watch, please choose sustainable salmon and sustainable seafood um, you think of it as like you're voting with your dollars to help out the planet and help out these, pop these wild populations of fish. Back to the salmon. 
So again, these are fig leaves. Find them, find a neighbor, get them from your tree. They have a like, they're just really nice. You wanna take them, I clip the little stem off here. I take a wet towel and I already did this. You take a wet towel and you clean the leaf off to get any dust or debris on them. And this is how you prepare the salmon. It is so incredibly easy. Um, first of all, we take a little olive oil and I like to oil the leaves just a little bit. And then the oil allows like the aroma of the leaf to come out a little more. We're gonna oil the salmon just a little bit on, the, on both sides. And these are about six ounce portions. So that's like one portion per person. And then you're just gonna salt it. You wanna salt from high up and it allows the salt to kind of spread out as it falls. And so then you get nice even coverage. Then all you do is you take the shiny side of the leaf, um, the top side, not the, the vein side, and you kind of just place this here at the bottom and you roll the fish around it like that. And so it's like a little package. Put that, and cooking in a cast iron. If you're doing a lot of these, you can do it in a uh, sheet tray or a baking uh, dish or whatever. So again, you kind of take this and you wrap it around. The only other thing you do is you just put a little splash of water in the pan. I'm gonna do that right before we put it in the oven. Um, but this dish is so easy and very adaptable. These are one portion pieces. You can, if you're having a lot, like six people over, you can get six little parcels out. You can also do like, you know, a pound and a half, two pounds of salmon and do it as like a, a bigger bake and you wrap the salmon leaves around it. If you don't have, a oh, salmon leaves, fig leaves. Um, you can, if you don't have a lot of fig leaves, you can put them as a bed uh, on before you put the salmon on top and just they'll cook really great that way. Um, I've even done a whole filet of salmon and you just kind of, yeah, make a bed and then you put um, the fig leaves on top of it as well. Today, I'm gonna cook these at 350. These size portions will take about seven to eight minutes. What you're looking for is the, the flesh of the fish turns uh, opaque. It starts to turn opaque um, and it starts to flake a little bit. And if you stick a toothpick in it or another like small pointy thing, it, you should meet no resistance and you should go through the fish really easily. Um, you can also do it at a really high heat, four or 500 degrees, it'll take much shorter. Um, if you have a larger filet, something that I like to do is crank it down to like 250, 275 and bake it for 25 to 45 minutes. And that slow bake of the salmon and the fig leaves, it just, that perfume and aroma just permeates the whole house and it just makes it really delicious. So I'm gonna take these now, I'm gonna bake them at 350 for about seven to eight minutes till they're done and then we'll plate everything up. So I took the salmon out of the oven. Um, you can tell it's starting to turn opaque and you can see that the flakes are just starting to separate. So it's done. The best way to plate the salmon is you kind of move it very carefully to a plate and you unwrap the fig leaf. But I like to leave it there as like, it kind of looks really nice. You just don't want to eat the fig leaf. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna finish up our cherry tomato relish. So we're gonna take the macerated shallots and vinegar. And this is the acidity portion of the relish. It has cherry tomatoes, garlic, lemon, parsley, basil, olive oil, and salt. And now it has the shallots macerated in the red wine vinegar. Give it a good mix. And this will just cut through the rich fattiness of the salmon and make it all come together. So we just put a little bit on top like this. And that is salmon cooked in a fig leaf with cherry tomato relish. I hope you guys make this dish. It is just such a fun way to prepare salmon. It's so simple. The flavors are just so incredible. It's the perfect way to cook salmon during the summer. You just gotta find a fig tree and that's, that's the only hard part. So if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe and please tell us if you made this or tag us. We would love to hear about it and we'll see you guys next time.